Hey guys, um, I wanted to come on here and share an encouraging word. Um, it's also just a word of caution as well to all of us. Um, I recently had a dream where um, there's a, a family that I know that are all um, believers and um, just they stand so strong in their faith. Um, you, you can just tell by how they walk and how they talk and, and how they live their lives that, that they've built their house on the rock, um, the rock of Christ and, and what he's taught. And, and they truly live it out. Um, it's just evident in, in your um, interactions with them and they're awesome people. But in this dream, I could see their home. And then I could see other homes next to them. It was in a neighborhood that was configured differently than how it is in real life. But um, in this dream, it just began to rain, like rain hard, like torrential downfall rain. And it began to rain so much that landslides began to happen. And the house that was to their right and to their left, both, completely collapsed under the weight of this of these landslides um, and I was worried about the family um, I'm not gonna mention them by by name but um, I was worried about them I was worried about um, what if what if their house got got crushed because the houses on either side of them got crushed by these landfalls I mean it was it was terrible they just completely just collapsed like like a house of cards like they were nothing um, but their house remained standing. Their house remained untouched, just firm, um, didn't collapse, didn't even have the landslide come, you know, a, a try to come down um, behind them. And that to me was just a testament to how these people have built their lives and have built their homes. And I feel like um, God wants to remind us that the abundance of rain, I just keep hearing it in my spirit, the abundance of rain. Rain is coming, rain is coming. And I've heard it from other believers too. We're all kind of all, you know, along that same Holy Spirit wavelength where rain is coming. And that means blessings and that means um, provision and um, that means satisfying thirst and um, making fruit grow and, and plants grow and making things in our lives grow. It, it's, it's good. However, um, it's going to be an abundance of rain, not just a little bit, but a lot. And if we have not built our lives on Christ, our house, our lives are going to collapse. Um, and I was led to um, Matthew chapter, well, starting um, in chapter 5, Jesus, it says here, seeing the crowds, Jesus walked up the hill. After he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak. This is what he taught them. Um, and this is the Sermon on the Mount. He goes into the Beatitudes and teaches um, just these wonderful, like, upside-down truths um, that are pretty, um, it's, it's impossible to follow within our own strength. We absolutely have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the grace of God to be able to live lives that, that look like that. Um, but just to remind everyone, uh, Matthew chapter 7 Starting at verse 24, so everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on bedrock. The rain fell, the rivers flooded, the winds blew and beat against the house, but it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like um, a stupid man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the rivers flooded and the wind blew and beat against that house and it collapsed and his, and its collapse was horrendous. And in this dream, the collapse of these homes were horrendous. Um, so an abundance of rain is coming. Um, and God in his mercy and in his, just his grace and in his awesomeness, he causes the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. 
So um, this storm that's coming, it's going to bring an abundance of blessing, but there's a, there's a, um, a word of caution in there as well that um, if we don't live our lives in accordance with the heart of Jesus, um, and we haven't built our house on the rock, which is Jesus, then our house will collapse under the weight of it. Um, also, Proverbs 24, verse 3, By wisdom a house is built, by understanding it is made secure. Um, and I believe that um, wisdom and understanding is exactly what Jesus was teaching on the Sermon of, of, of the Mount. Um, a wise and sensible man builds his house on the rock, hears the words of Jesus, and responds to them, and acts on them. Um, doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Peter wasn't perfect, but Peter said yes. Peter responded with, with a heart posture of yes. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit through chapter 5, 6, and 7. Um, I encourage everyone out there to read it, read the whole thing, the whole Sermon on the Mount. But um, this is what Jesus taught. How blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. How blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. How blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. How blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. How blessed are those who show mercy, for they will be shown mercy. How blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. How blessed are those who make peace, for they will be called sons of God. How blessed are those who are persecuted because they pursue righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And one thing, I mean, there's so much good that, that's in here. So again, read Matthew, or Matthew 5, 6, and 7. But I just want to touch on this part. This is what just kind of leaped off, leaped off the pages to me. This is what uh, we need right now. Jesus says they will know us by our love. They will know us by our love. Um, you have heard it said, this is Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard that our fathers were told, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Then you will become children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun shine on good and bad people alike. And he sends rain to the righteous and unrighteous alike. What reward do you get if you love only those who love you? Why, even tax um, collectors do that. And if you are friendly only to your friends, are you doing anything out of the ordinary? Even the nations do that. Therefore, be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Um, yeah, we need to love our neighbors um, and love our enemies. Um, we can hate what is wicked. You know, we, we, can, um, we can hate the sin, but we have to love the sinner because We've all sinned. We've all fall, fallen short of um, God's glory. Like we have all gone astray at one point or another in our lives. And we all, God wants to extend his heart and his grace and his mercy to everyone. And I just want to encourage everyone out there. And this is what um, the Lord recently just brought to my heart was, um, This world is increasingly growing hostile to God, to the things of God. Um, this world is, is trying to distance themselves um, and distance everything in the world. Schools, courts, um, businesses, uh, culture, expression, sexual orientation, um, lusts. Um, what our flesh wants. This world is try is just becoming increasingly hostile towards God because all a lot of people know is that um, 
they think God rejects them. So why would they want anything to do with the people whose God rejects them? So, so they perceive hate. But when Jesus walked this earth, he sat with the sinners. He sat and broke bread with them. He talked with them. He said it was, it was the sick that needed a doctor. Um, so if we approach everyone who is living their lives contrary to the word of God, contrary to what Jesus says is, is best for us, um, if we approach them not as if they're, they're the problem, because they're not, the enemy's the problem. Our enemy is, of, you know, not a flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers of this unseen. Um, let's approach them as um, the power of yet. I love that. They may not believer, be believers now, but they're just not believers yet. I, if our goal is to love, our goal is to restore them back to God back into the fold, that they are loved, that they are loved, that even while we, are, we, we were sinners, Christ died for us. That changes the tone, that changes the conversation, that changes everything. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the fact that truth is truth and the word of God is the word of God. We, we don't compromise truth, but we, it's, it all starts with love. So let's, I just challenge you all to um, ask God to help you see how he sees. The next person that, that you are, you know, tempted to be quick to judge, ask God to give you eyes to see them, how he sees them, because I guarantee you it will increase compassion in your heart. All right, um, so... Love your neighbors, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, and build and not just hear these words that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount, but build your life on them so that your house will stand because your house will be built. Your life will be built on the rock because an abundance of rain is coming. And if you don't build your house on the rock, it will collapse. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is made secure. So... Um, God bless you all and have a beautiful day.